One live. We are live once again. Uh, okay, how's that lighting? We are live. Okay, lighting's okay. I am hoping this is going to be a great video. Um, this is going to be about. This is going to be a bit video about three knives that you guys should know about. Currently, uh, two of these are on eBay. So right now. Hey, what's up, Skywarp? Hey, what's going on? I'm talking about two knives that are on eBay right now. All right, you guys can Google them right now if you want and check them out if you're interested. I recommend these knives. I think there's something that you should put into your collection. Um, I think there's something um, that a lot of people don't know about. And like certain knives really pull premium prices when they're selling. So for instance, for someone that collects trappers, of course, this trapper is going to always sell at a very standard price. But maybe I'm thinking 20, 30 years down the road, I think these more unusual knives will pull a larger profit and or just make your collection a little bit more interesting. Okay? Because I think some people get really hung up on collecting just one pattern. So I always like to diversify a little bit. And... Every once in a while, you want to have some unusual knives that are kind of cool. So the three knives are, I got a lot of case knives. Yeah, so do I. I, I you know, case knives are beautiful. I can really get sidetracked on case knives. I do have one case knife here, though. It's going to be three of these knives that I really think that you guys should know about. All right, so here we go. So the first one, and right now it is currently on eBay. All right, it's a four-inch blade. It's, a, it's at 1179K bar, all right? The reason I got to do this, I have to wear glasses. So I, I have trouble reading the Tang stamps. And I really don't want to wear glasses because it kind of messes up my communication with you all. So these run from about $32 to $50 on eBay, okay? It's a five and a half inch knife, all right? I've got, I got pretty much medium sized hands. Check out this blade. Ooh, yeah. These things are so sweet. And they were really manufactured really well. Look how well those springs are manufactured. There's no real, you know, if you look at some knives, it just looks really messy in there. All right. These handles are wood handles. Remember I told you about wood handles. I think wood handles are going to start pulling some premium pricing. And this knife has taken on a harder appearance due to its age. And that's why some people, you know, the, the, the metal will get a slight patina, you know, the wood and the brass will take on a patina. You don't want to remove that from your knife. You really don't. You want to let these knives age. All right. If it's corroding and turning green, sure, get some mineral oil and wipe it off. But don't polish and buff your knives, okay? Don't don't do that. That's not good. Now, if it's a if it's all stainless steel like some of these case knives, those are never going to change color, all right? So if you have a if you have something like a stainless steel current case like this, these are never going to dull or fade or anything. So yeah, sure, polish this up, okay? You're not going to change what this knife was. But if you happen to purchase a knife like this one, like I did, I'll insult my own knife. I will. Absolutely. This is an incredible knife worth well over $300. But tell me what's wrong with that. It's a Case XX. These blades were never that shiny. All right. They were never that shiny. Someone put a factory edge back on it. It's just too much. It just, it, there's something about it. It's too much for me. It offends me. Hey, it might not offend you. You might be like, damn, that, that looks like it did brand new. And that's a, that's an 80 year old knife. Yeah, sure. Okay. I get it. I get it guys. I get it. Not me. I'm not, I'm not into that. I'm more into like this Robeson. This is my Robeson. Okay, this is an unused factory edge. Okay, but you see there's a little bit of corrosion there. 
but I stabilized that corrosion. I removed the corrosion and I didn't buff this knife out. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to. Now, if someone wants to use this knife and make it their own, they can do that. But you can't take back that, I think. I just, you just can't. It's just too much. Let the new owner or the person that's actually going to use this knife, let him do that. Let him do that. Let's preserve the knife and its historical value. That's kind of like my opinion. So I'm insulting my own knife. This is one of my nicest knives, too. Got to do what I got to do, you know. I got a 1940s Hunter two blades. Like this one. Very nice knife. These are incredible knives. Um, whew, these are nice knives. They had some with lanyard holes also. I don't particularly like the bone scales on this one. Great knife, man. That's a great knife. All right, so right now, that's that's your 1179K bar. All right. I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't go more than $42, $50 for these. And I'd want to know if it has some good walk and talk at that. Okay. Um, $32, boy, that's a steal. So my, you might want to put in your dream price because I hate driving prices up. I don't want to drive someone's price up, but I don't want to knock their product down because someone that's watching this could be like, man, that's my listing, dude. Would you stop talking about it or whatever? <laughs> you know, um, this, hey, I, I'm, I'm being real neutral about this, uh, $32 to $50. How do I know that? You, you look at the historical sales, okay? So I've done that research for you. No more than 50 all right, and that's good walk and talk. 32 is a dream price. Currently, you can still get these. Highly recommend it. Great, unusual knife. And for those non-knife people, this, they love it. They just want to, they, they gravitate. Whoa, what's that? I'm like, oh, it's a K-bar. Check K-bar, I know what a K-bar is. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Why don't you carry this one? Yeah, this one is a, this one gets non-knife people into your collection. All right. And that's kind of cool. K bar knives are great and uh, they're really underpriced. Um, sorry, my chair is squeaking. Damn. Um, you know, they're really underpriced, I think, um, depending on what years, because some of the years with the dog shield, those are incredible. So. All right, so the next knife, and you can find this currently on eBay. All right, this was made by Queen, okay? This knife, its fit and finish is amazing, okay? A lot of these special edition knives, again, people, this is a single pattern, okay? It's a, it's a standalone pattern. It's, it's not a common pattern. So people don't want to add it to their collection because, like I said, most people collect a pattern. All right. So these unusual knives, let's say you want to carry a nice knife that's probably finished a lot better than most elephant toes. Right. All right. These are, you can call them elephant toes. And uh, what's the other one? Oh, man. But but this one, look how it squeezes down. It's got a cigar. Pretty cool, huh? But it's got an etching on it. It says President's Choice. Now, some people don't like etching on their knives. Hey, you can always take that off. But let's say you're going to carry this bad boy. You got a nice swedge on that. This is made by Queen. Yeah, Scrap Morgan there. Yeah, yeah. Queen is great. Queen is fantastic. Check out this small blade. No blade rub. on the small end you know uh that knife would be like a box cutter that'd be your grip here to be comfortable it's not really comfortable holding it like that this closes darn near flush so it's very comfortable so that that doesn't stab you so it's a very comfortable knife to use 
It's a nice spear blade. It's very easy to open. You can either just grab it and just pull it open or use the, you know, the finger stud. It's got, check this out, mop, shield, and buffalo horn. You could probably get this for about $90 with a beautiful case uh, on eBay. Uh, dream price, about 70 bucks. Okay. But don't pay over 100 And these will be finished a little bit better than their average knives, okay? And they will be usually cheaper. You, 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 you guys understand why? I mean, I, I do the same darn thing. If something's part of a set, it pulls a better price. If it's a popular set, like your, um, I've got these sod busters, and those are a set. A lot of people don't know about these. That's a stag. Wood, yeah, and then green. Case is so awesome. Yeah, yeah, case is pretty, pretty awesome. I can see why people love to um, collect case knives. Definitely a great company, and they, and they've their their quality has just gotten better and better. Currently, I'm very pleased. Um, and it, it, I mean, it's just fantastic. I'm just excited that uh, that American company is doing so incredible and so well. No, I don't get in their books. I don't know. They could be going bankrupt tomorrow for all I know. Um, but from from a collector standpoint, they're doing great, I, I feel. Have you heard of Sperry and Alexander Knives and A.W. Holsworth Knives, Standard Cutlery Company Knives, all three German knives? No, I have not. Wade's worth those ring a bell. Standard Cutlery Company. German knives are great. German knives are fantastic. Uh, uh, my favorite brand is actually a German company. So, you know, that's Bruckman. Uh, I, I love their knives. They're beautiful. All right, we got one more. And it's a, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, whoa, it's a, it's a case. All right, it's a case knife. Um, a little drum roll, all right? Check this out. Check out this shield on this thing. So why why should you know about this knife? Well, this one is made out of ATS-34. It is a Tony Bowes, and it's it's got C, Platts, and Sons as its Tang stamp. See, look at that swedge on that, ATS-34. Now, this is not part of the Tony Bowes series. This was a, a small run, I think, of 200 knives. Comes with a nice wooden case. This one currently is not on eBay, but you can get these for about 80 bucks because people get them confused with the stainless steel model. And you know what? You might want to look at the stainless steel model because the stainless steel model also has this wonderful swedge on it, which most case knives do not have that. The stainless steel model damn near looks like the ATS-34 model. So it's a very popular knife, but a lot of people don't know about it. So this one's the ATS-34 version. And you can find these for a real nice price. I already got mine, so go out and get them. C Platts. All right, and that number is, it's TB. Six two one one zero, and that's your saddle horn in ATS thirty four. It came in a commemorative set. Okay, um, I wish I had the box with me again. That's in my other stuff, and that is coming shortly. But even the stainless steel model, the stainless steel models are typically priced just like any other case knife. But the cool thing is, they also have a nice swedge. So I feel that they should be pulling more money at a later date when people realize what they have see a lot of people yes some knives have more things more options more binnies uh, better shields uh better bone all kinds of stuff and sometimes we don't really pay attention to that 
right? Until later on, right? If, if, if we only knew that, you know, a knife like this and this, you know, which one's more valuable? You know, this one, obviously. If we had only known that, right? We would have been like, I don't want this one. Because one year, you know, one day, this one, one year, this will be worth $100 more than this one. Just because it's, well, it's got nice, actually, it's made right, you know? So, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, there are really nice knives out there that people kind of really overlook. And I, I do believe the, the saddle horn is one of them. It's got a half stop, too. You know what I'm saying? Very nice. So those are three knives. I highly recommend you guys check out. Two of which are on eBay, like I said, which was your 2002 President's Choice, the Mop Shield Queen. All right. And that one's on the eBay right now. This one I think is going around 30, 40 bucks after shipping right now. Check it out. So that's your eleven seventy nine. This one is not on eBay right now. You can find the stainless steel versions for about sixty bucks, and they also have that nice swedge like the ATS thirty four. And if you're lucky, you'll find that ATS thirty four version, which eventually I think will be thrown in the class of three hundred dollars worth about three hundred, just like the other Tony Bowes knives. Um, it's a little bit different though. They'll have stainless steel back springs, stainless steel bolsters, right? The only thing that's ATS 34 is the blade. Interesting, huh? So it's not to the same level of a Tony Bowes, which is AT everything on this is ATS 34, every darn thing. And you can see the difference between stainless steel and ATS-34. But the blade, ATS-34, everything that matters is right there. And that will slip through the cracks. All right, let's check. I'll catch up with these comments. What do we got? What do we got? I sold a Cutco knife out of high school. The handles were designed by the engineer who designed the space shuttle joystick. I'm just saying. Cutco's knives. Interesting. That's interesting. What's up, Hammer Down Framer? I did not know that. I did not know that. Now check this out. Then if that's true... That would be that plastic that you're talking about. Now, Cutco is on the lower end of the elect electric knives, so those won't pull real high pricing. And they also make um, hawk bills, which are popular with you know roofers and stuff. And if if you had a Cutco, the Cutco probably looks something like this. Possibly, well, this is a queen. And of course, a queen with a nice liner lock like that will pull top pricing. So Tab42 says, what's your most expensive case knife? What's my most expensive? I would have to say, I'm going to go either with, Oh, actually, I don't have it here, but uh, I got this old case tested. Now, this knife's almost 100 years old, and that stag, this is an unused factory edge beauty, and there ain't nothing wrong with this one. There is just no gaps, no nothing. I would put it up with my custom knives. It is just, oh, just amazing. That's all factory. So Hammer Down Framer says, not much exactly. I don't even know if they are still around. You are very informative. Hey, thank you very much. 
So what it is, yes, they are not around. Uh, they're not. They, they, they were phased out around the 80s, I believe. But Cutco made a lot of stuff that was on the real cheap side. But they're extremely popular, and it's actually, I think, kind of hard to find them because people actually used them. You know, they really did. A lot of these nice knives, you can find a lot of these nice ones because these kind of ended up in grandpa's, you know, drawer or whatever. Not really used. Maybe it was a Sunday knife. Um, you know. Um, here's another case. This is a case XX. This is a 6347PU, and, you know, it's got nice, now this is true red bone. So when you say, you know, what's a red bone handle, that's a red bone right there. This knife is pretty beautiful. It, it is. I wish they didn't polish it as much as they did, but. I think eventually it'll take its patina back if I just leave it alone. Um, so, you know, but everything's nice and tight on it. It's just beautiful. It's really beautiful. We used to buy buck knives from Sears. Buck knives are awesome. Buck knives are fantastic. Um, Actually, the most valuable knives that I've sold on eBay um, are buck knives. I got a purchase of five lunchbox knives. Now, what is a lunchbox knife? Well, if you can imagine, if you can imagine a buck knife looking somewhat like this, I don't have any examples because those are in my other pack out. This is this is a charade, right? So this is a single blade, right? Just like a buck knife, your standard buck style knife, right? Imagine this having two blades. Imagine some having blades on both sides. Imagine buck 110s, buck, buck, uh, uh, the smaller version was at the 120s, having two blades also. These were lunchbox knives. And what they were were knives that they made on their lunch break. Whew, man, those really sold for a lot of money. I was really happy with that sale. A very uh, knowledgeable, forget his name. Oh, anyway, he's the buck guy. Contacted me. I listed him on eBay. He contacted me. He only wanted one of the knives. In return, he was going to educate me. Man, I'm all about an education. So uh, I happened to have one knife that he wanted. Uh, he actually bought it for more than I could have ever imagined. Uh, he actually put it in his collection and it travels the country with him on some of his knife adventures when he enters contest, which, cause he has a buck display with every knife buck is made. It's an amazing display. Um, but those lunchbox knives sold for about five to $600 a piece. I couldn't believe it. The, the prices were just going through the roof. Uh, are modern day case knives worth buying? I'm thinking about buying one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've got to have, well, I have a lot of current ones. I, I have a lot of the Tony Bowes series. I'm a real big fan of those. Okay. I'm a real big fan of those. These, there is no knife that's built better than these period. These one day are going to be amazing knives. People are going to look back and say just amazing things about them. Um, and you can get one of those knives with a signed Tony Bowes leather case with it for about 300 bucks. Kind of expensive, huh? All right, I got you. Um, gotcha. What do you want to get? You want to carry? And you like, what do you like? You like trappers? Get yourself a yellow knife. We got yellow knives. One of my favorite knives that case makes is the mini trapper and this is a current case knife that they carry this and you can get them in cv blades i'll show you a standard size trap where'd it go oh over here 
like so, right? So it fits in the pocket real nice, but check this out. This has something that most trappers don't. Half stop. Sweetness. They don't charge more for this. This is just a knife that has half stops. So it allows you to close with one hand. One hand, you got that extra safety. So I recommend, yeah, you can get one of these. Make sure it has the half stop op option and CV blades if you're going to use it. Keep it oiled. It'll take on a nice patina and it'll sharpen up real nice. <clears throat> so yeah, get one for a user. You know, don't I don't you know if you really want to get an older one and use it, go ahead. But man, they're so they're not making any more. They're not making any more of these, man. So it's not that I don't want to use it, but come on. This knife's over 100 years old. You really want me to use this? I don't know. I, if you want to carry a real nice knife, why don't you carry a, a custom? Because this is worth two times as much as that custom. So if you want to be the coolest guy in the block, sure, I guess you could carry it. Maybe a few people will know that this is a Case XX and you didn't press. But in general, someone would be like, dude, why are you using that one, man? You know, I mean, use something else. Doo -doo -doo I like trappers. Oh, I think everybody likes trappers. I think trappers have one of the sexiest master blades. And I'm going to piggyback on that real quick and see if you guys agree real quick. This is why trappers are the most popular. Right there. Just look at that. Master blade. This one actually has a high polished edge from the factory. Anyone that says tested XX razor's edge had that option thrown in there. Notice how it's so shiny. It's not jagged. So if you look at a standard model, the edge is jagged. See the, see the burrs on it? See the jagged edge? Those, no. Those are the tested XX ones. <clears throat> Wish I had one. Oh, man. It's just a matter of time, buddy. Just a matter of time. Classy looking. Thank you very much. I think that's why everybody likes these types of knives is because they are classy. Everyone says there's something about them. Well, the something about them is you can pull these out and use them anywhere, and they really don't bother people too. Um, and some of them have some really good locking features. Thinking about a mini trapper. Well, I would highly suggest that one right there. You can get these for about, I think, like 35, 40 bucks. They're pretty popular, though. So well, that could be wrong. I haven't done a Google search on this particular one. With my luck, they don't make them anymore. And now this is collectible and it's gone up in value. When I purchased it, I think it was about $27 brand new. You know, yellow knives became very popular. I know. I collected quite a few of them. Collected. This is a nice carpenter's knife. Look at that blade. Real beefy bird's eye rivets. Ow! Woo! Man, I'll take your finger off. Master blade. How's that for a sexy master blade? And then, well, it's a cattle knife, of course. So this is. This is the castrate. It's a castrating blade, historically. But it's very popular, so they have continued it. Very cool. Very cool knife. Yellow knives are cool. You drop them, you can find them. They're sweet. They make me happy. I think all knives make me happy. <clears throat> what is your favorite style to collect? Wood handles. Because wood handles take on a character over time that's amazing. And they're exceptionally well-priced. 
And when it comes to a return, very stable. Opinions come and go when it comes to stag and what people like. Um, you know, some stag will always be popular. But I'm not a real big fan of the way some people fit stag on a knife. I just think it looks a little bit nasty. So, you know. But they pull the highest prices, usually. So the highest price knife will be a stag knife. But a stag knife that looks like that. Once fitted nice. See how that's fitted nice? It's not all swelled up in the center. Half stop. Ooh, man, look at that sucker. That's, that's nice. Lots of nice life. All right, now you got me looking at case knives. Oh, I would absolutely look at case knives. You want to you know where to start? You want to you put something good in your collection that's affordable and, and it'll make you feel good, but, you, but you're not going to kill the budget. Okay. I would recommend... Nineteen seventies, because everything's Case XX. If you put Case XX, you're gonna pull up every knife from the year two thousand fifteen to to nineteen oh two or something. I mean, it's just nuts. So nineteen seventies Case, and just go with your jackknife, standard old jackknife. You can get these in red bone. It's a medium-sized knife, very popular. They made so many of them. This is a Case XX USA. Okay, so this is this is pre-dot. And these will go about 50. Nice little jack knife. An old it looks good. Yeah, they made a lot of them. Check that knife out. Even as your knife hobby progresses, this will stay there. It will. You know, but it's real affordable now. I think later on, um, they'll be a little bit too expensive for what they are. You know, because it's just a jack knife. Jack knives are – the reason I like jack knives is they've got that nice little – spacer there right so you don't get that awesome blade rub that we all love i don't like blade rub and you know what so many knives that rely on fitment rub sucks you get scratches then when you sell it you gotta oh it's got three scratches across the starboard side you know, it's really annoying and it really affects everything. It, you just can't list the knife like this and say, hey, two bladed jackknife that's effing gorgeous. Walk and talk, 10 out of 10. Half stop. They don't even make blades like that anymore. Look at this. Watch this. Current. Even Shat and Morgan. Look at that nice wide style. I don't have very many current models. I know. And the half stop is such a must. It really is. It, it was standard. I mean, that, it was brainless. Every old knife I have, here's an old knife from 19-something, maybe 18-something, half stop. They all have half stops. Every single one of them. Unless it's a little pin knife. Okay. So it bothers me when a current model that they spend all this money making beautiful. Look at this. So gorgeous. Look at how beautiful this knife is. But it's got no half stop. Boy, that made me nervous doing that. Whew. And I could feel it just about to go over center and take my finger. Why? And that's because, man, that's, that, it's kind of hard to fit that. 
The old knives, they're all flush in both positions. It was just like it, you never saw a knife that wasn't flush. I, mean, I could grab any old one. Look, even a little boy's knife. This is a, uh, sorry guys, I know people, they don't like this. Makes me look old, right? This is a Simmons, the Simmons Boss, right? It's got a beautiful wood handles. This is pre keen cutter. This is well over a hundred year old knife. Wood handles, just a little boy's knife. Same thing as the little Remington boy's knife. Everybody knows about that, right? All right, here, let's look at that. Come on. Let's look at it. Just like your Remington's boy's knife. But this is a single blade. Listen to this. Look at that blade. That's a nice blade in that little, little package. To give you a reference, here's a current case knife, little pen knife. So it's not a pen blade. So this would be like in your purse, your keychain. This little pocket knife. Watch this, half stop. Never fall on your hands. It really closes. I really don't want to lose a finger in front of you guys. <laughs> All right, but check that out. It was common sense to have one. It, it was one of those things that every knife had. Oh, oh yeah, flush, of course. Of course, flush in every, of course. These were all handmade. Every one of these. All these old knives are handmade. You can still pick these up for 20, 30 bucks. These knives are going to last a lot longer than new ones. I'm sorry to tell you. It's, it's pretty hard to beat them. You know? So when I see a knife like this selling for the same price of a current pretty knife, I mean, come on. You know what that is? It's because people don't know what it is. It's like a custom knife. This was made by hand 100, and, 100 years ago, you know? <clears throat> Hypervigilance says, nice. Ooh, tap says, sweet. Hypervigilance says, it has a half stop too, and absolutely. Uh, the Levin 4th edition book you recommended is going for over $100 now. Um, I might have had something to do with that when I did that video. Um, sorry. There's no other book like it. Um, you can get one of his other editions, third and or fifth. It's not going to have those pricing in it that he does. Not that I really gauge knives like that, but I, I've got the third. I've got the fourth. I've got the blade book that basically... They purchased from him, which is like the first, I think, edition or something. Levin is a wonderful man. He's a genius. And uh, I, mean, I really don't know him as a person, but I read his book. I like his book. Um, so if he's watching or has ever heard of me, I respect your work. Um, if you read that book and understand that book, you can price any knife. And I'm, ki I'm, not, telling, I'm not kidding. It really does really well. I I. I believe the wood handle knives are going to be a lot more popular in the future. So when it comes to what's coming down the pipeline, um, I'm a real forward thinking kind of guy. You know, I really think about kind of stuff, this kind of stuff all the time. Um, and I, I really like the wood knives. I just think that they're fantastic. Um, you know, they just got so much character and, and beauty to them. And I'm talking about pocket worn. They just, I mean, they just get so smooth and nice. And most people, when they look at a knife like this, they're like, is that wood? I'm like, yep. And they're like, man, I don't think that's wood, man. I think that's that's like that horn stuff. No, it's wood. It's wood. And that's because it's just, it's just become so hard and it's so highly polished. Just really beautiful. I like it. A lot. Too much, maybe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not becoming broke. Well, maybe a little bit. <clears throat> So how long have we been going for? 39 minutes. All right. Well, <clears throat> so
so those are my recommendations. This, this, and this. A president's choice queen, okay? Tony Bowes, sow belly, saddle horn, sorry. Why do I say sow belly? I do that all the time. This is a new pattern for me. Well, it's a new pattern, so it's a Tony Bowes pattern. Edit. And this is your 1179. I can't read it with my, without my glasses on. 1179, guys. Made by K Bar. About 40 bucks for these. I think you got two of them on eBay right now. Yeah. Don't jack the price up. I mean, once it hits about 50 bucks, I'd, I'd chill. Just chill, man. More will pop up. There's plenty of them out there. That's why I'm telling you about them. Plenty of them out there. When they start to sell, knifers will start to sell them. They'll start to come out of the woodwork. And I don't mind. I'm more than willing to pay 40 bucks for one of these. No problem. No problem at all. All right. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it. Well, definitely thinking about the Tony at the Tony Bows. Yes. Um, I recommend the Whittler. Check out the Whittler. The Whittler is amazing. And I like the Whittler. I think the I think the chestnut bone is one of my favorites. This is a dog leg jack. I do have a Whittler in the same thing. I also have a Whittler in the same thing with Damascus blades. That's part of my Whittler collection. I'm in the city now. Listen to this. We got airplanes, we've got sirens. I'm working on a house that's close to the mountains, so it's not gonna be quite like this. This is my mommy's house. Um, and we're all living together for the time being while I'm renovating my house, actually building my house, absolutely building it. So, oops, all right. All right, I gotta go. Take care, I hope you guys enjoyed the live. I hope you guys checked out my recommendations. I'm going to start doing this from now on. I'm going to be looking at eBay. I will be recommending a few knives. Um, and also, if I see something incredible, or if you have a question about a knife on eBay, you got to catch me at the beginning of the pod. You know, write it up. I might even do something like that. Super chats or something like that. You know, if you guys, you know, I need some money here. You know, uh, eBay, I will tell you, I can tell you, I can price these knives really good. Um, and I, I know which ones are going to sell for a lot because I know how my collection is going. Everything I've gotten has been retrade and retrade because I am a nut. So, oh, look at this, Scrat Morgan, real quick. Look at that. I like them bone handles. Look at that. What do you think about GEC knives? Incredible. They're expensive now, though. I think I did a bunch of videos on those. I told people to go out and buy every last GEC they can get their hands on. Every single GEC. If that GEC is under $50, you need to buy that GEC. I, I told everybody that. So I got all mine for well under twenty, well under $40. Serialized the whole bit. Um, they were literally giving those knives away. I, and... Now those knives are worth bundles and people want their knives and, you know, they've made a few runs that I don't really like, I don't care for, but in general, man, no knife even comes close. Yeah. And now they're selling for what they should, well over a hundred dollars. So you, you, you got to pay for them now. Um, I mean, what are you, what are you going to do? Eventually, people catch up. You know, eventually, people figure out, oh, this is better than what's being sold currently. And then they'll go out and buy a bunch of these. You know, and if they use knives, which I do, um, yeah. And then they just go up in value because they're not making any more of these. They're just not. And they never will make things of the same quality. If they make something to the same quality and if not better, like a Tony Bowes knives. This knife will be 300 bucks. That's it's a $300 knife, guys. Well, 
This is a $300 knife too. Right? It's a 1970s case trapper. I like this one. I'll take this one as my second choice. I'll use this one. I'll put this in my pocket and use this one. Man, this is a beautiful knife. I keep showing it to you guys. Even though it's not my most valuable knife, I'm just so impressed with it. It's such, just such a great knife. And that's one of those things. You guys get a great knife in your collection. You're never going to let it go. It's yours. It's your beautiful knife. you got a story about it. You'll, you'll tell people over and over again how the blades are polished at the factory. And this is what we do. This is a $300 knife, and you're going to pay 300 bucks for it. Now, these millennial editions, if you want a Tony Bowes, you want a good price? Get these. The 2000s. You can find these for about 120 bucks sometimes. Yeah. I don't know why. I think they list them wrong. I don't know what. Because I got both these. Yeah. I'm telling you guys. Got to look for those anomalies in life. So our old king... Klein knives worth collecting. Yeah, uh, th but they're popular with electricians. Again, that's like a Cutco, uh, a Camellius. That's a really, yeah, it's a Japanese knife. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to go up in value. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the education. No problem. Thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, I can tell you what is one knife that will. No, I'm going to save that for another. I'm going to save that for another video. I got to take off. I got to eat. I just heard him. It's dinner time. So, hey, take care, and I'm out of here, guys. Awesome to be.